welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Why, hey there, my fabulous listener. Welcome to episode 220 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. Thank you, as always, for lending me your ears today. I know you have lots of choices out there, and I do appreciate you making my podcast one of them. Today, we are talking all about LinkedIn, but don't leave yet, okay? Do not leave yet, even if you're not on the platform. This one is worth hanging around for. Of course, if you're listening to this podcast and enjoying this podcast, please take a screenshot and share it on your socials and tag me. It'd be super cool to get to know you as well as you getting to know me every week here in your ears. Um, Before we get started, a couple of things. First thing, did you listen to last week's episode all about making sure that you're looking at leads the modern way, not the old way we used to look at leads into our business? If you didn't listen to that, then after you finish here, slip back to episode 219 and listen to more small business made simple gold and of course uh my other thing if you um haven't done your Christmas shopping yet or you're not quite sure what to get people or you're looking for something different or you're looking to support rural and regional small businesses, will you go and have a look at spendwithus.com.au? So all the W's, spendwithus.com.au. It's my online marketplace that I run with the amazing Sarah and the whole team and we are all about supporting rural and regional small businesses. I know that every small business has found the last three years hard but rural businesses in particular have been through droughts and floods and mouse plagues and COVID-19 and bushfires and just so much in the last couple of years. So I'm all about helping them out to get more sales for Christmas. So I'd love you to go over and visit spendwithus.com.au. The link, of course, is in the show notes. But on to today's episode, I have a fabulous guest. Kate Merriweather is here and we are talking all about LinkedIn. She is a LinkedIn coach and a LinkedIn specialist and she's all about turning your followers or your connections into fans and then fans into buyers. Now, regardless of whether or not you are on LinkedIn, take a listen. You might really be surprised about what the platform has to offer your business now and maybe even where it's heading in the future that can help you grow your business, grow your audience and of course ultimately grow your profitability. Kate is a fantastic person to talk to about LinkedIn. I asked her lots of curly questions and we had a great conversation so I would love for you to have a listen to this episode. Of course again all Kate's um, links are in the show notes at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 220 should you listen in and decide that you need to connect with Kate. Otherwise, here's my chat with Kate. Let's go. Kate, I'm super excited to have you on the podcast today. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. Yeah, no, it's going to be a great conversation for sure. We are talking all about LinkedIn, but before we get there, Kate, for my amazing audience who may want to know a little bit more about you or may not have come across you, um, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yes. um, My name's Kate. I'm based in Melbourne. Uh, I was a copywriter for 12 years Wow. and uh, I started using LinkedIn to grow my business and get copywriting clients and everyone kept asking me how do you use LinkedIn what's your strategy every time I open LinkedIn you're there what is this magic and then you know when you have that aha moment and you're yep. just like oh I think I think I could I could do this for people like I could teach people mm. so um in June of 2022 I got rid of the copywriting clients and I um decided to become a LinkedIn coach. So here I am. 
Yeah. Wow. I, I love that. See a problem, solve a problem, listen to your audience, you know, listen to what the questions are asking. Like, I think if more small business owners took the time to do exactly what you did, they would, yeah, be able to harness their, I guess, their authority and their expertise a little bit more. So I love that so much. You can't see me, listeners, but I'm nodding to everything <laughs> Jenna's saying. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So I know that some people are already thinking LinkedIn, really? Mm -hmm. Um, I think anyone who is a longtime listener of this podcast knows my love-hate relationship with Meta. So I'm excited to be talking about it, a social media platform that isn't Meta. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, why LinkedIn? Why why LinkedIn and why now? So there's a lot of benefits of LinkedIn, particularly why now is LinkedIn has a content problem. So LinkedIn has a lot of people on the platform. So we've all kind of got a profile that just sits there Mm -hmm. doing nothing, but it's only about 3% of LinkedIn members who are creating content. So LinkedIn has this huge deficit and it's really trying to encourage more content. And it's really shifted away from a few years ago. It was very corporate. It was very professional, a bit boring. Um, (laughs) And now it's it's just chilling out a bit. So it's changing direction. More and more creators are jumping on and they are just sharing great stuff. So it's a great place to learn, if nothing else. Um, the community is now becoming more active. So, you know, when Instagram was hot and you're like, oh, I wish I'd start on Instagram in 2015 or 2016 when all you have to do is post a few pictures and, you know, get amazing reach. LinkedIn is like that now. So we do have to jump in now and build our audience before things change because things will change. This is social media, won't last forever. So, you know, like Facebook has gone from paid, you know, pretty organic to like paid. It's really hard to get reach on Mm. better and you have to pay and LinkedIn will go down that road eventually. So let's build the audience organically now while we have the opportunity. So people who are creating and being honest, authentic and real, you stand out automatically because there's so much braggy, bad content on LinkedIn. So (laughs) you can be that breath of fresh air on LinkedIn and reach your audience. They are on LinkedIn. They are scrolling, looking for you and you can be the person there for them. So Mm. I think it's a really exciting opportunity you don't have to do reels and dance and point. Yay. You don't, have, <laughs> you don't have to do like even be good at design. I'm the worst designer. I hate like I'm just <laughs> terrible with colours and I just wear black because I don't know what colours to wear. And um, LinkedIn is all about the written, you know, you can write a really snappy, engaging post. You don't have to put a, put a pretty graphic on. You don't have to dance on reels and you can get fantastic reach and you can build your own audience you can connect with people and they automatically follow you. So it's really easy to get proactive on LinkedIn and search for the people that you want to follow you and potentially buy from you by just adding them. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to build a following on Instagram. For example, you can follow them, but they don't follow you back necessarily that decisions on them. But if you send a connection request on LinkedIn, they automatically follow you and they get to see all your content. So I just think that's brilliant. If you're starting out in business and you want to reach any kind of audience, particularly B2B, but not even B2C, you can get on LinkedIn and find them. It's really, Mm. LinkedIn makes it really easy for you to do that too. Yeah. Cause I was going to say like, you know, it's very much, I love, I've often quoted it as professional Facebook. Like I really do love that the the trolls aren't on there. The anger's not on there. That's one of the reasons why it's one of my favorite platforms, but it has been traditionally a B2B platform, business to business. Like your customer is another business owner. Is that changing? Are they, you know, e-com people and retailers and people who sell, I I guess, tangible products. Uh, Is it making wave for them? Look, it's very early days in that space. I have one Mm -hmm. e-commerce client and I'm working with her. She has a pretty low audience on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, especially she's got like 50,000 Instagram followers and things like that. So it's very early days for her, but she wants to be positioned as an expert in e-commerce. So she's slowly building her audience and she's not in a huge rush, 
Um, but she is selling directly on LinkedIn. Um, it can be done. And, and wouldn't you want to be the first? Yes. Like, yeah. um, I can't see it becoming hugely e-commerce focused, but I was talking with a, uh, a woman who has like corporate hampers and things like that. And her audience is LinkedIn. And I was saying you can connect with PAs and, you know, marketing teams who are sending gifts and people like that who are looking for solutions, especially um, at you know Christmas time. You can find those people on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't discount it. It's but it's still new and fresh. So yeah, I think yeah. you can play with it if you were an e-commerce. You could play with it. Um, some brands might work better than others. I, I work mostly with service-based businesses. Yeah, on I have one jeweler. Um, one of my clients is a jeweler, and she's been playing in the space. But hasn't seen great results, but certainly hasn't seen enough result to keep going mm. and to keep persevering. Again, to be you know the people that were on there first, a hundred percent. I really love that. Mm. Um, so. I guess that leads into a really good question of what is working on LinkedIn? Like you've talked about, uh, you don't need to be great at graphic design. You don't need to, you know, oversell yourself and that, but what is actually working? For instance, you know, if we looked at Meta, which, you know, I despise, but that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> you know, video is king. Is video king on LinkedIn? Yes and no. But yeah, we'll talk about video. So what I put out a lot of videos. So a recent algorithm report came out and said videos actually reduce reach a little bit, but I still highly rate videos. If you're not afraid to show up on video, you stand out because most of your um, competitors are too chicken. Yeah. So <laughs> you can just put videos out. I put short videos frequently. So I put one mo every day, a weekday, I should say. I do not recommend this for my clients, but I'm in a growing active phase at the moment so yeah uh so yes I would say my videos aren't for the casual scroller but they are for the seriously researching considering working with me mm -hmm. so I will stop doing videos when my leads stop saying I watch your videos and I'm here yeah so that to me right. so I sometimes get like five views I don't really look at the stats to be honest Jen but I get low views on my videos but everyone who comes to me and books my services say they watch them. So That's that to me. So is, interesting. I don't, who cares about the views? So and like some of my friends are like, oh, I see all your videos. I don't watch them. And I said, you're not meant to watch them. It's not for you. <laughs> it's not for you. But the people who are watching them come to me and they feel like they know me. Um, sometimes they mention things I've said in the video. And of course I can't remember what I've said. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you said something the other day. And I'm always like, did I, what did I say? <laughs> um, cause I do a lot and I do them in batches and things. So yes, video works for me. The reach is a bit lower. The view, you know, the engagement, like on paper, you wouldn't do it, but what, what your leads are telling me yeah. is that video works for me. So I won't be stopping video and I encourage my clients. Some of them flat refuse. And that is the great thing about LinkedIn is you don't have to do video. You don't have to do any kind of content. There's many ways to stand out on LinkedIn. And I've seen some creators who just post a single kind of written post. She never puts a selfie. She never does a poll. She barely does any graphics and she just writes awesome tips. Yeah. Pretty right. much, you know, three days a week and they're good. They're really good. They're short, snappy. So that is working brilliantly. Mm -hmm. Thinking about people are scrolling. So making your content really digestible. Like I think people tend to like write a bit of an essay and that's dangerous. So people don't okay. really want to. Yeah. So I'm focusing on short, snappy content. That's just like, here's a tip. This works. This doesn't. The end. Yep. Mm -hmm. Really easy to read, simple language. And that's kind of easy to write too, Jen. Like you, yeah. you don't have to, you can write. I've been doing a challenge with myself lately to write a post in three lines only. <laughs> I just say, this matters. This is important. The end. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, yeah. they work really well. And how yeah. easy is that to write? Like you can do that in like five minutes if you have a good idea. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing that's working amazingly is carousels, which do take a bit more effort because you have to get, you know, get into Canva and create something. But mm -hmm. I've been posting carousels that have, really increased my following. So I got an extra like 300 followers last week from a carousel that I posted. I got lucky, like a few high profile creators 
saw the carousel and commented. So that extended my reach. Uh, but carousels are great for dwell time because people have to stop and scroll through the carousels. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to obviously include useful, valuable advice and you know storytelling in a carousel, but they are having a hot moment right now. Um, and with anything, we have to keep an eye on it and make sure that you don't want to be the last person just still churning out carousels and we've all moved on. Polls were really hot a few years ago and now everyone hates them. Yeah. Carousel, carousels will go the same way. Yeah. Absolutely. But they're big right now. And it's my job as a LinkedIn coach to keep on top of those trends and help my clients take advantage of them and also tell them when it's time to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Great. I think that's a great tip about the carousels. They work well on Instagram. Mm. So it makes a lot of sense to think that they, you know, again, if you're a first adopter, they're going to work well on another platform as well. Um, is that the best way to be seen? Like you you talk about there's only really 3%, which is an astonishing statistic for anyone, but you kind of just skipped over that gate. But I think it's really like to think that, what is that? Six million people mm. on LinkedIn or something, mm. and only three percent of people are actually posting yeah. something, actually building content. And of that three percent, there's probably only one point five that's worth anything. Yeah, like you know, that isn't just bragging about themselves yes. or you know some some sort of nonsense that you know yes. has a lot of eyes and wees in it. Rather let than me, uh, let me let me after this podcast, I'll double check those stats and I'll give you a link because I'm really wary to quote stats. That's the latest in my mind, but I'll double yes. check that because yeah, I, I know the three percent out there about stats and people <laughs> roll out stats and then don't don't like yeah. prove it. So we, will... we we may have been at the same uh, uh, um, event right. where they were talking about that <laughs> yes, sort of thing, <laughs> which was music to my ears. Yeah, because I've I've just been having you know been frustrated by that personally for years. If someone says you're ten times more likely, and I'm like, well, who who said? Where's the study? Show me. I always get annoyed. So yeah. yes, but will, anyway, it's quite small. That that. It, it's, it's small. Quite it's definitely small. small. So it's how do you stand out? How do you get How do you stand out? So I, one thing that people underestimate about LinkedIn is that people are searching on LinkedIn and they're typing in, you know, I want, I want a content creator. I want a graphic designer. I want a real estate agent. People are actually looking for those experts on LinkedIn, mm. um, not just recruiters. So if you can understand what that phrase might be for your business or your brand and put that keyword in the right places, then your visibility on LinkedIn will improve. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit like Google SEO. Like you get rewarded if you've got good content, if you've filled out your profile properly, if you've got a good following, that all helps get ticks in the boxes so that if mm -hmm. someone searches for you know, real estate broker in Melbourne, then you want to be in that top 10 positions of people looking and they will start scrolling down to find who they're looking for. Yeah. So it's important to understand that process and to put your, optimize your profile for search, just like you would optimize your website for Google search, which is what I used to do as a copywriter. I would, I would have that whole process when I was yeah. writing web, web copy, yeah, it's not as sophisticated, luckily. It's pretty simple. <laughs> it's not as fancy, but it is a great way for you to get found. And by people who are searching for you, they've made the decision to look for a graphic designer or a, what is it, a dog trainer or whatever it might be. Yeah. People, um, surprisingly, do use LinkedIn search for that purpose. Yeah, right. Yeah, great. Okay. So I know that um, within, you know, LinkedIn and your how you teach people about how to get more leads on LinkedIn and how to optimize their profiles and things like that, you talk about five elements mm. to a strategy. Can you go through those with us or some of those with us today as to what those yes, five elements absolutely. are? Um, stop me because I'll talk, I'll talk an hour on this. So <laughs> the first thing is optimization, which is what I was just talking about, like being seen. Mm -hmm. then it's about connecting for growing your audience then engagement obviously it's a social net network so we need to engage and you can do that in a strategic way to help get you noticed and then it's about your content so you're sharing lots of helpful insightful useful advice and being that breath of fresh air that I mentioned and lastly sales because we're not here to muck around I don't know about you but you know I want to make sales for my business yep. and I want to help my clients do the same. So yep. having that strategy for those five elements is 
super important. And some people might have a couple of those going on, but they're not actually actively selling. So it's all nice and sunshine and rainbows, but yeah. they're not necessarily getting leads. And mm-hmm. that to me is what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So is there, like if we take a um, engagement type strategy, mm-hmm. what's the best way to enact an engagement strategy on LinkedIn? Mm. So it's nice to engage and just scroll through your feed and comment on whatever you, whatever you see. And the more that you do that, the more LinkedIn understands the kind of content you're looking for and the algorithm will give you better content or more of the same. Mm -hmm. So what sometimes people fall into the trap of doing is they just comment on their mates to support their friends or they're in a membership together and they're commenting, yay, oh, Jen, you're so awesome, Lala. Jen, you're not my, either A, my target audience or someone my target audience follows, then you can end up in a little bubble with each other. Like when I was a copywriter, I did this. I would comment on all my copywriter friends' posts. They would comment on mine and LinkedIn would think, oh, she wants to see more content from copywriters. But they were my competitors. They're my friends, but they're also my competitors. So what to do instead is to look at some creators that have a bigger audience than you, that you kind of want to steal their audience, to be honest. So (laughs) they're not competitors because it's a dick move to do to a competitor, but um, they have a bigger audience or the right audience. So who would be following? So my example is say you're a nutritionist, you might look at a personal trainer because they're also going to have people who are interested in health and wellness following them. Mm-hmm. So you might then, instead of just scrolling in on LinkedIn, looking for stuff to comment on, what you might do is... Um, Sorry, my father-in-law is just coming to the front door. Can I just can we just can we just yep. pause one sec? I'll just say sorry. sorry. So if we look at something like an engagement, so how do you get a, like what does an engagement strategy look like on LinkedIn? I guess how do you get people to engage more with your posts? Is there some strategies and tactics you can use there? But also, you know, should you have a well-rounded engagement strategy where you are engaging with other people? Yes, Does that definitely. Help? Because it helps yes on and yes. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yes and yes. Yeah, it, it is very similar to what Instagram experts recommend. So in terms of getting people to comment and engage with your content, then my first thing is share something because so many people are afraid to. And then ask for it. So think about, is this commentable? Um, something might be, oh, I'm so pleased to announce I've got this offer. Well, that's not so commentable. It's still part of the strategy. It's more part of a sales strategy. But yes. then you balance that with, you know, this is an important issue. What do you think? Like, tell me. Like, so mm. people will comment if you ask them to comment, if you give them commentable content. That's hard to say. And then if you're posting useful stuff, then people will show their thanks. Yeah. So one of the metrics for success that I look to look at is, are you getting comments that say great advice, thank you, or Mm. DMs saying that? Once you get start to get that sort of feedback, you know that you're delivering helpful content because you Mm -hmm. want to help more than you sell. Yes. Uh, So that's an important part of it is ask for the engagement. Think about some posts you do not, you know, some posts are about um, I want to sell, I want to, I want to shout out someone or I want to, talk about this podcast I'm on with Jen Donovan (laughs) and but you want to balance that with that engagement driven type of post so those ones you want to get a discussion going you want to ask people what they think you know you could Jen you could say oh meta sucks I'm really over it does everyone else hate it as much as I do here's why I don't (laughs) like it you know and then people go yes oh my god it's so annoying when they whatever like you could people uh, i'm so going opinion. to do that as long as mark zuckerberg doesn't see it and kick me off the other platforms <laughs> I, you know that'd be fine <laughs> yes. so that's important and then when same thing like people want comments on their posts so you can be the nice person who contributes comments on posts shares your opinion, shouts out people. Mm. Obviously you never try and steal that audience and direct people onto you, you know, your own. Like I had no. one guy comment yesterday, oh, here's a blog I wrote about. It's like, this is my, my, don't you die hijack. <laughs> but you can just say, yeah, I'm interested, or, you know, um, yes. things like that. And you can comment on creators that your audience might follow. So the example I use is say you're a fitness coach, you, there might be a nutritionist or a dietitian who has people who are interested in health and wellness following them, well, you could comment on their posts strategically Mm. and then 
their audience is going to see you in the comment and that might help them discover you and help you grow your awareness because they are likely to have similar audience the yeah. kind of people that you are trying to reach as well. Mm-hmm. So we've talked a little bit about what works, what's happening now. Um, I'll ask you a little bit later about some changes. I think there's some big changes coming to LinkedIn or there's whispers about it, but what doesn't work? Let's go with the negative. I don't like to you oh. know, start with negative, but is there anything that people, you would say, this is the biggest mistake people make or, um, you know, don't do this on LinkedIn. It's just not really what happens over here. I think what doesn't work is people just talking about themselves. Um, mm. I think the big mistake is probably not starting with a really solid profile and saying at the very least, like you don't have to become a LinkedIn creator, but a lot of times if someone's Googling your name, most likely your LinkedIn profile will be the first thing that appears. Yes. So you want to have your house in order. So yeah. um, make sure that your profile is optimized, that it's compelling, that it's properly filled out, that it's got all the right things in the right places that puts your best foot forward. Mm-hmm. Once once that box is ticked, then you can start drawing people to your profile with content, engagement, adding connections, et cetera. So that's probably the biggest mistake is people just start sharing content, but then people check out their profile and they get confused or they don't really know where to go, how to land, and they don't. We all know mm-hmm. that that's the way if buyers are confused, they tend to just hit hit that reverse button on the yeah. oh, what is it called the back button and go back, back and, yeah. yeah and, and yeah and yeah. they'll make that decision really quickly so yeah. And especially That's- if you've um, rebranded yourself or you're wanting to mm. do a different niche, like imagine if we went to your profile now and it still spoke all about copywriting yeah. when that's no longer your niche, like yeah. you know, your content might be great and says that. And then we get confused when we go to exactly. your profile. So it's like, oh, I thought she was mm-hmm. a LinkedIn person, but she's not or something. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, exactly. Uh, but when you said like mistakes, I think LinkedIn, like LinkedIn isn't perfect. No. There's things about it that bug me. Um, and hopefully LinkedIn will be fixing this. So there's rumors of like a better messaging process because, you know, you get lots Mm -hmm. of DMs on LinkedIn. They're annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you start getting DMs of people that want to buy from you, then suddenly you're willing to put up with the annoying DMs. (laughs) (laughs) And I've I've got a fairly big audience. I've got about 7,000 connections and followers. So... um, and I don't get that many. Like it's not that. I don't know. You can just let that annoy you. Or just it's no, pretty you easy just to block swipe people. and delete. Yeah, swipe just and ignore. delete. Yeah. LinkedIn. LinkedIn's got a bit of a dilemma there because it has this product sales navigator, which is yeah. a tool that you can use to DM and do your outreach, cold outreach that sales teams use. It's not something the small business owner would necessarily need. Mm -hmm. I'm all about inbound. You know, you just put yourself out there and you let them come to you when they're ready. I don't recommend like sending spammy DMs and buy my stuff. It's, you know, as a user of LinkedIn, it's irritating. So I just think let people make that decision for themselves and let them Mm -hmm. come to you. Um, So LinkedIn sells that service. So they can't really limit it too much, but they are looking at putting some more barriers around it and, stopping people from sending too many messages. Um, one client I know sent a sent 1,000 uh, DMs, got a VA to send the same DM to a 1,000 people and got put in LinkedIn jail for doing yeah. that because it was a copy and paste. So yeah, LinkedIn is putting people in jail for, you know, doing spammy behaviour, yeah. which is good because we don't want it's that. Great. You know? Yeah. So look, I'm not going to pretend LinkedIn is perfect. Uh, I think there's things that are irritating about it. And if you're scrolling your feed and you're bored and you're not engaging with the content and you just off you go five minutes and you think, oh, I don't like any of this. My advice would be to find those cool creators at, um, because they are on there and they're sharing great stuff. And then you'll enjoy scrolling on LinkedIn because they are sharing so many nuggets of wisdom mm. that you can find helpful. Like I've got lots of ideas. Uh, like I learned about carousels from other expert creators who were sharing and talking about it. And now I'm sharing and talking about it. We're yeah. all learning from each other. Yeah. Great. And yeah. that's, that's brilliant about LinkedIn. Uh, mm. So if you're bored in your feed and what you're seeing isn't turning you on and you're just like, this is wanky, then try and find some experts 
and fo follow some new people and the algorithm will start to learn what you like and it'll start to give you more of what you like. But you have to teach the algorithm by commenting, blocking, you know, stopping following people you dislike and commenting, engaging with those you like and spend a bit of time educating the algorithm and it will deliver for you. Yeah, yeah, great advice. Absolutely great advice. Now I'm going to ask you to put on your crystal ball hat here <laughs> and have a bit of a discussion. I've got a couple of points here. Um, you know, LinkedIn is my favorite social media platform, but you know, I just want to run a few things by you. Curiosity for myself, mm -hmm. what you think, but also I'm sure that my listener will love it as well. LinkedIn groups, yay or nay, will they ever make a rena renaissance? They're getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had a membership, a professional membership, I wouldn't be putting it into a LinkedIn group. Mm -hmm. Um, they're okay. They're okay. That's yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe. They used to be great. And then they took a big dive and now yeah. like, are they ever going to come back? Yeah. LinkedIn kind of want, like LinkedIn missed the bus on groups and yes. Facebook groups is what kind of the, the standard that we aspire to. Um, they're okay. I've been in some like as test groups just to see. Uh, you have yep. to have your notifications on to get notified. So if you know how you scroll on Facebook, you will get notifications from your group. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to happen as much on LinkedIn, which just means group messages get lost. So um, okay. it's yeah. not something that is a big priority for me um, and not something that I would recommend to my audiences. But you could certainly play with it. Um but if, and particularly if you're doing like a paid membership, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be using a LinkedIn group for that. Yeah. Bit yeah. Risky. Okay. Bit risky. Great. The second thing that I had written down here was scheduling. Doesn't matter if you schedule through a third party app, do you get less reach rather than if you went into LinkedIn and posted natively there? So there's been rumors about this for years and it's one of those, like no one really knows for sure, but, yeah. um, there's been a recent algorithm report come out by this super nerdy guy who is just give, delivering us all gold by figuring all this <laughs> out. And he's saying, no, not so much anymore. Yep. Cause I think LinkedIn having that content creators problem used to punish schedule scheduling tools. I, I think it's against their terms and conditions as well. Mm -hmm. um, but now that LinkedIn is like, we need to make life better for creators then creators want scheduling tools. So LinkedIn is bringing in its own scheduling Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that is an option um, but increasingly the answer is no the scheduling tools don't impact your reach but asterisk what does improve your reach is when you're on LinkedIn at the time and you're there responding replying to comments in the first mm -hmm. hour and also just active on before and after what I call babysitting yeah so you baby you you comment on a few posts before and then you comment on a few posts after now that's difficult when you're busy in business so you can't yeah. always do that and it's it gives you a little bit of a boost so if you had something that you're like I really want this to fly and I'm doing this as a as a specific strategic way then I would babysit that post because it's important mm -hmm. and the rest is to schedule and get on with your day because we're all busy man yeah, time yeah. For all this. <laughs> yeah, certainly that's the way. Uh, and I keep referring to Instagram, you know, but I'm sure it's the same on Facebook, but we've done some um, testing and measuring on Instagram. It's exactly the same. And I guess, you know, mm -hmm. it makes sense as a business model. Um, articles and newsletters. So no. publishing articles, publishing newsletters, yay, nay. No and no. Okay. <laughs> Short answer. Articles are kind of disappearing. Um, LinkedIn wants you wants you to publish articles. I always want as a strategy for my clients and me to get people off LinkedIn and onto your website where you can nurture them further. Yeah. Uh, so for me, if you've got a blog, um, I would be not publishing that as an article. I would be linking to that in a post and getting people off LinkedIn and onto your website. Then you can get the pop-up. You can net to them and so forth so LinkedIn doesn't want you to do that but I think that's best strategy then you can get people off LinkedIn and into your world newsletters yeah. were hot for a while their reach is dropping yeah. uh do you read any I don't read that many I don't think I've even had anyone ask me if I want to be included in their newsletter to be in yeah because once you publish one it's kind of like you can invite people to be on your newsletter can't you As yeah you can invite people it yeah to, to subscribe I've yeah, turned that word. 
Mm-hmm. You get like, you know, one day you wake up and there's 4,000 invitations for you to subscribe <laughs> to a newsletter and you learn quick, smart to turn that notification Maybe I've got off. mine turned off. Maybe I already yeah. turned it off and I you didn't must know. Have it off. Yeah, I've definitely got it off because I just woke up one day and it was new and I just, what's all this? And then just, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, uh, no, again, same reason. You want people on your own newsletter, your own asset. So you can mm, definitely use love LinkedIn it. to build your list. But if you... If, if, if LinkedIn changes, whatever, decides to kill newsletters and you've got a list on LinkedIn only, like just vulnerable to LinkedIn. Yeah. Whereas, so I would recommend building your list. I'm no email strategist, Jen. I've got like 150 people on my list, right? So, <laughs> but, uh, but you want to draw, you want to use LinkedIn to get people to your website on your list and that's where you can continue to nurture them. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, two more rapid fire questions. Mm-hmm. Um, will they ever let you go live on their platform without a third party app? Have you heard anything as to whether or not you can go live on LinkedIn? Because at the moment you need a third party app, don't you? Yeah, I have not heard that. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Look, I don't use LinkedIn live. I just film videos and share them. Yeah. Um. What I do see expert creators doing is doing something like what we're doing now, like having a chat with someone else. So that's mm-hmm. a good reason to do a live. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're just talking on your own live, I would just record it as a video and, and keep it short because people yes. tend to talk a bit more when they don't have a script and they're just chatting and it's yes. lengthy and we probably don't have time to watch like a 20 minute live. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing that is um, that I've been playing with is LinkedIn audio. Well, um, that was one question. I was like, I did say oh, there was two left, but really there yeah. was three because apparently <laughs> that's new that's coming. I think I might have even seen that on your yeah. LinkedIn, but I don't think I have it as yet. Does that mean I haven't updated my app? Oh, or? maybe. Update your app, but you and, you and I can do one, Jen. We'll do one. Yeah. But um, it's if you remember Clubhouse and you're active on, it is exactly yep. the same. There's no recordings. You just have a chat. Um, so jury's out on that. Um, I think they're fun. Like the ones that I've done, I've had like 15 people come along. So you're like, is it worth spending half an hour to talk to 15 people? You know, maybe, maybe not. if they're 15 buyers or not. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, or you could put a video on there that, or a post that takes you less time that could potentially speak to all of your, you know, at the time of their choosing. So, um, I, I kind of think that it's fun. Um, but it's a time thing. You know, when everyone yeah. was on Clubhouse and then you realise that if you're on Clubhouse, it's like an hour a day of just listening and it's not yeah. the most productive. I loved anything. Clubhouse, but it, I can't find yeah. anything I like anymore. So I haven't oh, been I've on been... there for ages. It's oh, a mess. Same, same. So it's, and when you try LinkedIn audio, it's exactly the same as Clubhouse if you remember it. Yeah, like you right. bring people on stage and yeah, blah, blah. so I've okay. enjoyed the um the one, the two audios that I've done have been collabs. So it's been me talking with someone else. And I think that's a nice way to do it. Beautiful. That could be just fun. So have fun with that. Um, it's not a huge See what change up. Yeah. 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 And my last question was um paid ads. I haven't have to say I haven't had a lot of luck with LinkedIn ads. Mm-hmm. Do you have uh, have you had any test measure or had any no, feedback? No, I d I don't do ads. I just do all organic. Um mm-hmm. So I'm going to refer to my friend Stacy, who is a LinkedIn ads expert, Stacy Hughes. You can yep find her on LinkedIn so she says she she's biased that's her job but (laughs) she says they are they are more expensive when compared to other social media ads um Mm -hmm. so you want to get your spend right Mm -hmm. um LinkedIn ads are about 30 percent of the feed and there's rumors that that will go higher so again um build your organic audience now before LinkedIn becomes full of ads yeah um one thing that Stacey tells me is that LinkedIn ads don't work if you don't have an orga- a good organic presence as well. Yeah. Um, so it's that's another good t- thing now is to build your organic now because if you ever do decide to advertise, then you've got some skin in the game already. Yeah. Um, so I can't comment on whether ads are effective or not because I really don't know and it's not my expertise. Yeah. Um, Stacey would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> she's a fan of LinkedIn ads, but she knows how to do them and do them properly. And I'm sure there's lots of ticks and tricks and things to do, to do it right, to get the return that you're looking for. 
Yeah, beautiful. Appreciate your honesty. So, yes, great. We will have to follow her uh, and learn a little bit more about LinkedIn ads. Um, Kate, this has been such a great conversation. Is there anything that we haven't talked about as far as LinkedIn goes that you would love to slip in before we finish up? You know what? It's about mindset, Jen. I think that's what trips people up the most is people find LinkedIn a bit confusing or nerve wracking or they just think, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to learn another platform. I'm not Mm -hmm. here for it. And I would just encourage you to make the most of the opportunity that is here with LinkedIn. Uh, There are ways to do LinkedIn in a sustainable way. You could just post once a week and just keep things slowly ticking along and just, just, you know, don't miss out, I think. And don't let those fears of showing up or any kind of just nervousness stop you from seizing this opportunity while it's here for you. So I think sometimes I teach people what to do and I give them all the tools and I send them on their merry way and then they just don't take the action. And that's not because they don't know what to do. It's just because they've got some fear stopping them. Um, So that's another important thing that I I try to help people with uh, to help them just kind of go for it. Yeah. So that's my final advice. Just give it a shot. Don't worry about it. Like, yeah. Someone said to me last night, I'm scared of LinkedIn. And I said, do you post on Instagram? Yeah. And I said, just still, like, do you get scared? when No, nah, I'm not going to say it. Like, <laughs> it's all just people. Same. Same it's all same. just people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, great. Such great advice. I love that. Thank you so much. Kate, this has been such a great chat. Thank you for answering all my questions around LinkedIn and giving such value. If anyone is sort of thinking, I need Kate's help to help me with my LinkedIn and grow my LinkedIn, what's the best way to connect with people? Well, LinkedIn, obviously. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> Find me on LinkedIn. I share lots of tips. So, and I, I get lovely messages from people saying they're following my tips and they're seeing success. So you can get all that for free. Uh, I also have a power hour where you can work with me one-on-one. Quite often that is enough. Like if you kind of know what you're doing, you just need a little nudge, then we can spend an hour together and just nut out everything actually get quite a lot done in an hour you'd be surprised Mm. so um i have spaces available for that and if you want the whole enchilada you can work one-on-one with me for four weeks we'll sort it all out your profile your strategy everything get it together and then i support you over four weeks while you implement it you can just ask me any questions how do i do this is this okay all that sort of stuff so you get a little bit of a cheerleader as you have that strategy and then go and implement it. So that's my one-on-one offer. Beautiful. So find Kate Merriweather on yes. the, um, on LinkedIn. I will, of course, have that link in the show notes. But I'm sure if you just went to LinkedIn and wrote Kate Merriweather, you will pop up. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you so much again, Kate. This has been so great. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Thank you, Jen. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation and hopefully Kate answered some of your burning LinkedIn questions. I think LinkedIn is a great place for growth and if you're not on it, make it a priority to hop on, to learn more, to follow people like Kate, to watch YouTube videos, to learn to understand what LinkedIn has to offer that is different from the other platforms. Um, Again, all the um, links to Kate's connection, so her LinkedIn, her um, website, Facebook, Instagram, are at the, in the show notes at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 220. Otherwise, I'd love to chat with you in my Like-Minded Business Owners Facebook group. If you're not a member there, then come over and join there. Otherwise, that's it for another episode. I will be back next week for episode 221. And in the meantime, let's hang out on social. If we aren't hanging out on Instagram, Facebook or quietly my favorite LinkedIn then let's go and hang out over there and get social on social but whatever you do remember my small business peep as my opening song says there is no point in dreaming small no time like the present tell like you feel it say it proud be true and let us see you for the star that you are I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Yorta Yorta people, on which I record this podcast and conduct my business today and pay my respects to their elders, 
past and present. I extend this respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us today as well.